Hey, what's up everybody? It's Ben here again today. I wanted to talk to you while I'm out here taking a walk on this beautiful day on the subject of fasting. By the way, here's my dog Sherlock. I know I said I was going to show him to you on the last video, but he didn't quite make the camera. So I'm going to make sure to go lower this time. Here's our beautiful miniature schnauzer. Say hi, buddy. Sherlock. Hey. So, all right, we're talking about fasting. Now this is uh, something that was requested by one of our YouTube subscribers. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit here while I'm out here taking a walk and share with you some keys about fasting. Now I don't claim to be, by any stretch of the imagination, a fasting expert or some sort of authority on the matter. In fact, there's been seasons of my life where I realized, man, I need to do this more. Um, and uh, But I wanna share with you what I do know and what I do, some of what I do practice as well. So here's two foundational keys to understanding what fasting is really all about. The first is, is that it is tied to, you have to embrace this reality that you are not just a physical creature, all right? In the postmodern world that we live in, this American culture is so material and so modern, it's like um, we set our eyes on the physical things so much and it's easy to lose sight of the fact that we even, there is even more to the world than what we see with our, our natural eyes, you know? Um, so we are physical beings, but we are spiritual beings as well. We have a physical nature, but there's part of us that cannot be seen, our spirit as well. And then the second part of that is now you have to read Galatians chapter 5 where it says that the flesh has desires that are contrary to the spirit. That's what the net version says. I think it's actually a little stronger in the original Greek language. It's like the flesh has desires that are at war with the spirit and vice versa. So there's a conflict there and that has to do of course with partly the fall of man in the beginning in the Garden of Eden. That was what introduced a separation now when Adam and Eve originally fell, but it, it continued throughout time. Uh, as man grew farther away from the will of God, there's a separation of wills to where you read now, where even Jesus himself, right? When God became a man, he partook, this is gonna be in our Thursday night Bible study, he partook of our human um, uh, nature, our existence here as human beings. He actually became flesh and he was a partaker in our humanity, the Bible says. And as that, he had to deny himself. He actually had to uh, put to death his own will. This is in the Garden of Gethsemane is where it comes out the most, most clearly when he says, not my will, but thine be done. He actually had to deny the will that he had as a human being so that he could pursue and allow the will of the Father to be done in him and through him. So that's where we are at. So where fasting really comes in into this is that we acknowledge that we are more than natural beings. We are spiritual beings. And let me, let me give you a few more scriptures. It's really, I think, going to ex expound on this a little bit farther. There's another one that's really important on the subject of fasting where it talks about when the children of Israel went into the wilderness and they were being led out of Egypt for the first time. We talked about this on our series on um, lead us not into temptation, right? How he, God allowed them to be tested. He allowed them to be tried. One of the, the first things that you'll see when they go into the wilderness is the Lord actually suffered them or really allowed them is what it means to suffer hunger um, for, for a few days. He wasn't going to starve them, of course, by any, God is good, right? That wasn't his intention. So why did he do this? Why did he actually, you know, they're going through a wilderness for a period of time and the Bible says they hungered and they didn't have any food. Well, the word of God tells you why he allowed this to happen. It was for their good. Everything God does is for our good, right? He loves us. He's a good father. So Moses actually explains, and I'll try to put the reference to this in the YouTube description, the scripture reference. He said, he told the children of Israel, he suffered you to hunger so that you would learn that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So powerful. So when we fast, what we are doing is we're putting aside and we're choosing to not um, acquiesce to 
the constant desires and urgings that our flesh nature has because it's endless. The flesh never stops desiring. Once you eat, you're going to want more. And, and this is true with more than just food. It's true with uh, sexual desires and impulses. It's true with greed. It's true with lusts, all types of different things. The flesh is, when you understand the flesh nature through the Bible lens, it's like this un, uh, insatiable desire for more that we're willing to kill, we're willing to steal, we're willing to even harm others. You know, this is what the, the sin nature, it's what it is to get what we want. So when we fast, what we are actually doing is we're saying, okay, flesh, not today, <laughs> right? Not today, right? There's a same famous saying in Christianity, not today, devil, right? There's even t-shirts you can get that. But really what we need is a t-shirt that says, not today, flesh, you know, <laughs> not today, flesh. That's your real worst enemy, by the way. The devil can only do so much. He's under the, the um, on a leash, if you will. Now, my dog's not the devil, right? You know, but my dog here is on a leash, and uh, you know, understand that that God is in control. Even the, the 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 enemy of your soul, the devil, he's on a leash. There's only so much he can do. But what's really the challenge is getting our flesh under control. So when we fast, what we're saying is, I'm going to push the food away. Now, how long do you want to fast? There's no guidelines in the Bible that says how long it has to be. Uh, you know, I've fasted a meal. I've fasted for a day. By the way, fasting for a day, this, this is something that you should, you should consider incorporating. There's so much to say on this subject, guys. Maybe we should do a whole live stream because I don't know if I'm going to finish this. You know, there's actually a lot of, you can YouTube this, intermittent fasting. You might be aware of this. Intermittent fasting is now like really on a very popular for fitness channels, um, health channels, dieting channels, about the health benefits of intermittent fasting. I mean, it, it's really it's really remarkable how much I've seen lately on this subject. That's out of my my realm of expertise, but I do recommend you check it out. It's really interesting. Now we're not fasting for health benefits or you know. Um, to be in shape or whatever the case may be. That's not what we're doing. We're fasting for spiritual reasons. But it's interesting to note that there's so much science out there now to that, uh, that indicates how good it is for you as well. So that's just sort of a, of a side note. But um, you can do a meal. When you, if you're doing a day fast, a great way to do it is the biblical way, which is, this is, this, this is really interesting, but according to the Jewish mindset, when you read the Bible, the day does not start when the sun comes up. The day starts when the sun goes down. Um, that's how the Jews have always viewed it, is that the day starts at sundown. So a common way to do, if you want to do a 24 hour fast, is you eat your last meal right before the sun sets or somewhere, you know, it doesn't have to be exact, I don't think, but in that time frame when the sun is setting. And then, uh, so you have your last meal before you go to bed, you get a good night's sleep, you wake up and you don't eat, and then you eat again right as the sun is going down the following day. So that, that's a 24 hour period um, that you can go and, and you're fasting during that time. Now, when you are fasting, again, it's the principle is that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So you can actually, and this is the vibe, the zone that I'm getting into is where there, there's actually, now you're, trust me, your flesh is going to complain. Uh, you'll get the, the stomach's going to growl. You may even get headaches. That's something that I experience from time to time uh, when I fast as well. Uh, but uh, you can get in the zone. You, when you practice it, you get better. By the way, drink water when you fast. There are places where they did fast from water. I'm not saying you can't ever, but you generally want to drink water when you're fasting and stay, stay, stay well hydrated. That's the road, road that I recommend. So, um, uh, when you're when you're doing your fast, uh, you're teaching yourself that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So you can get in this 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 groove where you actually get excited about fasting because what happens is you're saying, man, this is going to be my day where I'm really going to open myself up to what God is saying to my heart. So you have your Bible, right? So a common thing that's done when fasting is you say, okay, this time I'd normally eat my, my, my physical food, I'd eat my breakfast, I'd eat my lunch, whatever. And But today, I'm actually going to read my Bible during that time period. So you see how you're, you're, you're replacing it with something. And uh, man, there's, there's always, my flesh is always fighting me on, when I'm on a fast day, right? Um, but 
there's also a sense to where I actually look forward to it as well because it's like, man, what's God going to show me today? What am I going to see in his word? What am I going to be able to absorb? And a lot of times here, this is another key, is that your spiritual man, uh, and I say that not gender specific, just general, uh, your spiritual nature, maybe I should say, uh, has a hunger too, all right? But we're so consumed with trying to satisfy a lot of times our natural hunger. And this is the problem that we have, you know, in our, in our world today is that, and especially living in, um, you know, the United States of America where even the poorest amongst us have so much compared to the rest of the world. That's why a lot of times you see, you know, revival and, and, and uh, this incredible breakouts of moves of God in third world countries because like they don't have physical possessions. They don't have anything else to focus on, you know, and the Bible says, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. There's a school bus driving behind me here, so it might get a little loud. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. Well, there is there is a, a, a um, inversely proportional relationship sometimes in our hunger and thirst for righteousness, which is a spiritual hunger. That's what Jesus is talking about, right? Our hunger and thirst for him. He is righteousness, right, Jesus? So hungering and thirsting for him uh, is an inverse relationship almost to how satisfied and full we are in the natural sense. Because when your flesh is constantly saturated, then what happens is your spiritual hunger, the voice of that spiritual man gets drowned out. Or really, a lot of times what's really going on is it's still crying out, but we, we're not aware really of what's going on. And we're actually satisfying our, we're trying to satisfy in a carnal way what's really our spirit crying out and saying, you know, help, I, I need, I'm hungry, I want something. So, but then we drown that out, we just say, okay, we think, oh, maybe I need, I'm, I'm just, I'll just be real, I'll talk about a few things, okay? Maybe I need to just go uh, eat some ice cream, you know? <laughs> All right? or, or maybe I need to just um, go watch another TV show or just to drown out this feeling that I'm feeling. Or maybe I need to, uh, you know, pursue, I need to go to, you know, X, Y, Z place to find another relationship to get into, you know, cause I'm doing, I'm dealing with loneliness or and loneliness is a real thing that we deal with all of us. Right. Uh, but the point is that we, we, we satisfy carnal things, um, or we reach out to carnal things in an attempt to satisfy many times spiritual desires. Right. So, and we can't hear that voice of our spiritual man. that's really hungering because Jesus is the bread of life. That's spiritual bread, right? So Jesus is saying, and this is in Isaiah as well. He says, you keep spending, in Isaiah, he, uh, he prophesies, you keep spending your money for those things that don't satisfy you. You keep exerting your energy on things that are really only going to satisfy your flesh, but leaving your spiritual man still hungry. So again, it's blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. That's a spiritual desire. And when we are fasting, we are actually... Um, growing increasingly aware of just how much we need God. And we're doing that by letting our physical man go through that time of hunger so that our spiritual man can be awakened and strengthened and receive the word of God into our hearts. Now, one other thing I'm going to share to you that's very interesting. The Bible talks in the book of First John. It describes all that is in the world as the lust of the flesh, three things, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, those three areas, that kind of summarizes and gives you categories for all the things that are in the world. When you are fasting, you're actually dealing with all three of those at the same time. Here's why. First of all, the lust of the eyes, all right? Uh, because when you're fasting, you're gonna see some food and you're gonna have to tell yourself, hey, everything that I see, I don't need to have, all right? This is, this is one trouble. Thing that trips us up as humans. In fact, when you read in the Garden of Eden where Satan tempted Eve and she fell and she took of the fruit and she was deceived, one of the things that the Bible says is that she saw with her eyes that the, the fruit was good for food. It was pleasing to the eye, she saw. Now, this isn't, this is, there's really more going on here because the Bible says that God had already provided for Adam and Eve every tree that was good for food. He had given them an abundance. There was no lack. God is love. God took care of them, gave them everything that they need. But the, the, the deceiver, that's what the Bible refers to as 
Satan, the deceiver of the world, he deceived her and said, hey, look, look how good this looks. So the lust of the eyes and she ate, right? So when you're fasting, you're telling yourself, I don't need to have everything I see with my eyes. And then you're also dealing with the lust of the flesh because you're saying, I don't need to follow every urge that my body um, gives me. And that incorporates, that encompasses a whole area of, of temptations that we deal with as humanity. That's what we struggle with. That's why our society is struggling in many ways today. I call it the gospel of Disney, which is basically follow your heart, you know, follow your inner urge, follow your desires. Well, those inner urges, those inner desires, the Bible says, are going to lead you astray. They're not working for your good. They're not working for life. They're working for your destruction. They're working against you because they're contrary to the will of God. So when you're fasting, you're saying you're teaching yourself, you're disciplining yourself, you're keeping your body under subjection is how the Apostle Paul wrote it by telling yourself, hey, look, just because I'm feeling this urge, I don't need to act upon that urge. And you're dealing with the lust of the flesh. You're also dealing with the pride of life. This is very interesting as well, because when you're fasting, you are voluntarily humbling yourself. And when you read in the Old Testament, where people humbled themselves. Just, just do like a word search. You can use our app, teachjesus.app. You can use any Bible program where uh, they humbled themselves or humbled himself. Just click that phrase. You'll see a lot of times in the Old Testament when they humbled themselves, the physical action that they took that the Bible describes as humbling themselves is fasting. They fasted and they, they humbled themselves by pushing away food for a little while. So this action humbles yourself. And if you fast, you'll, you'll experience this. Why? Because uh, your body actually is weak while you're fasting. You don't have the same energy like you used to. And you, you recognize how frail you are as a human. It's like, man, you know, just one day without food or three days without food or one meal even without food. And it's like, oh, I feel weak. And, and you know, I can, oh, and you, you know, if you're over dramatic like, like me sometimes, you know, you're like, oh, man, I'm just so weak and I got to lay down. It's not that bad at all. But sometimes that's, you know, how your body reacts to that. That, um, because it's like man you realize how frail you are when you're going without food and that goes away with time you get mentally much stronger as you practice it but um, you're dealing with the pride of life you're humbling yourself by putting yourself in that position of um, fasting so it's really amazing how that ties together and deals with all three of those areas at once and the Apostle Paul said he said, when I am weak, I've learned that when I am weak, I am str that, that's when I'm strong. Because in our weakness is when the power of Christ, he said, in my weakness, the power of Christ rests upon me. That's when I notice the power of Christ dwelling in me and working through me is when my body is weak. So he said, therefore, I will glory in my weaknesses, glory in my infirmities. So it really becomes this thing where you can enjoy the process of fasting. Your flesh is always going to fight you, especially at first. But when you're in the middle of it, it's like, man, you enjoy it because you recognize you feel, you know, the power. I don't even know if feels the right word, but you perceive it. The power of Christ working in you. Um, during that time where you're going through weakness and your spirit rejoices in it and you feel yourself kind of being strengthened in the spirit uh, by the Holy Ghost as you go through that time of fasting. So this has been on for a while now. I better cut this short. But I hope that gives you a little bit of an overview of what fasting is all about, by the way. Don't forget to leave us a like on this video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Ben Stone. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon is what actually notifies you if you're not getting notifications. So hit that bell icon for more content and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow for our next live stream. God bless you. Have a great day in Jesus' name. Love you all.